Well, somebody said something interesting to me today. I was uh, having a conversation about the debate actually last night, and uh, they were they were talking about how they thought one of the candidates did a really great job, and they were certain about different aspects of that. So, uh, as I've said in a prior video, certainty uh, is a is a big term for me, something I don't treat lightly. And I I explained to them the concept that I use with my son where I say certainty is in effect a, a pinky promise, which for a seven-year-old is, is maybe the biggest deal in the world. And if you're, if you're saying you're certain, you're, you're pinky promising, right? You're, you're saying the threshold that you've gotten to, right? The, the work you've put into it, the assessment, the questioning, the ability to say this is a fact, I am certain, is so high, equivalent to a pinky promise for a seven-year-old. That's the only time you should use that term. And when I said that to the person, what they said in response to me was, well, I'm absolutely certain I believe this is true. And that made me stop for a second because um, that's an interesting phrasing, right? I, I guess my first logical response to it as I heard it was, I guess the math checks out on that, right? What I often say is <clears throat> you can only be certain about things you can control or things that you can objectively measure, right, and, and, and observe and say, yes, I see this is true, I can measure it's true, or you're, you're in control of it, right? And you could say with certainty, I'm going to do this thing or I did this thing. So in this case, what the person said was, I'm absolutely certain that I believe this person, you know, did better in the debate or whatever it is. So that, that I guess, holds. The math checks on that. They, they can be absolutely certain that they believe that. But it's interesting because, so, so it's true, right? Logically, it holds. But what does it actually mean? It doesn't really mean anything, I don't think. It's, it's semantics. It, it's, it's putting lipstick on a pig. It's, it's whatever cliche you want to use. You're dressing it up in a certain way so that it sounds more significant. And we've had this conversation before. You know, we talked about the topic of facts versus opinions or fact versus truth and how people like to use the term truth because it, it, it signifies or at least it, it indicates there's more weight to it. It means something more than it's just my opinion. It's my truth. This feels very much in that vein that I am certain, I am absolutely certain I believe this is true. <laughs> Well, all you're saying is that you're, you're certain of your belief, that what, that you have your mental capacities with you, that you're not mentally insane, that you're not schizophrenic, that you have a grasp of your beliefs. You're aware of your beliefs and you can state them. That's all you're saying. But to this person that said it to me, um, I could feel it in their voice. It meant something more to them. And these, these mental tricks, these word tricks, this word play, all this stuff that we do to make ourselves feel better to validate our views and our beliefs, to protect our identity, to try and, you know, win the argument, whatever it is, make our point, sacrifice truth for simplicity, all the things that come with that, the things that we do, they matter. They matter, they matter a ton. And again, in this example, this person, their convictions were so strong about it. And we weren't having a combative conversation, but they, they were getting emotionally charged. And that type of rhetoric, that type of language leads to that. When you tell somebody, I'm absolutely certain I believe this, just say what you mean. Say what you're actually saying. Hey, I think this person won the debate, or I think this person was right on that topic. Okay, we can have a conversation about that. Tell me why you think that. Cool. Okay, let me tell you what I think. And then we go back and forth. Because your rhetoric allows you to say, well, here's my view. And let me tell you why I feel this way. And you can have a conversation. When you say, I'm absolutely certain that I believe this is what happened. Well, now, firstly, the person receiving that message <clears throat> is going to be a little bit pushed back and say, well, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to engage maybe. Or I might go the other way and say, hey, if you're, if you're coming that strong at me, I'm going to come back that strong at you because I see that's the game we're playing now. So you're setting the other person off right away. Not to mention, you are putting such a deep stake in the ground surrounding and protecting your belief that you need to dress it up or protect it with this with this veil of certainty, which isn't even actually real, but you want to put that shield around it. You want to make it feel like it's there, right? Now you're you're committed. Now you're committed to this thing that you have to protect because you've 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 committed to it so much. You've put that word certainty in it and your conviction is so strong. So there's nothing productive that comes out of it. There's nothing useful that comes out of using that terminology or whatever other terminology you want to use. Right? All it's doing is making you feel better in the moment. It's making you feel safer. It's making you feel more in control. It's making you feel as if because you say it so emphatically and in that way, that somehow it means more. But as I've said in other videos, 
inconvenient truths are true whether we like them or not. They're true whether we acknowledge them or not. So this is just a mechanism or a method in which our minds try and deny that fact, try and deny that reality. If we say it in such a way, maybe that means that it actually is true, even though the inconvenient truth is still just that's a subjective opinion that you have, right? So not helpful in that way. And most importantly, as I said before, not helpful because it, it destroys useful, productive conversations. Certainty almost always does that. If you can't prove it, if you can't show it, measure it, observe it, certainty makes conversations extremely difficult. So don't interject it in there where it doesn't belong.